Hello and welcome to another edition of The Rest is Entertainment with me, Marina Hyde. And me, Richard Osman. Hello, Marina. Hello, Richard. How are you? I'm really, really well. I'm, more importantly, I'm going to ask how are you and specifically I'm going to ask how are you because anyone who listened last week will want to know whether you tried Brooklyn Beckham's pop-up delivery service. I chose the things that he'd made the most fuss about, which is the Nanny Peggy's breakfast sandwich. As I suspected, it didn't travel well. And then a sort of oh, the long spaghetti, spaghetti, bolognese. spaghetti bolognese. Again, I think that people who order pasta from delivery services are psychopaths. I was one of them. And I can tell you that that also didn't travel well. But, you know, I've partaken in a, a revolutionary d- food delivery experience. And the sandwich was a disaster. The spaghetti bolognese was OK. <laughs> I wonder if they'll release the numbers or say what a huge success it was. I'm afraid I haven't seen any commentary on that so far, but I will be going to have a look. Well, I'm assuming as it was only two hours a night for two (laughs) nights, they probably sold out. I'm guessing it would be, do you know what? I mean, it was designed to sell out, wasn't it, really? (laughs) Pretty much. You know, if by the middle of Saturday they're going, no, no more calls. They go, what should we, just Brooklyn in the corner with a whisk. Well, uh, Brooklyn's representative, of course, because he didn't do the cooking. Yeah, but you know what? In a sense, he did. In the, yeah, it, he sprinkled his magic dust over the menu. Now, what <laughs> are we going to talk Palmer about Zan. this week? <laughs> Wrestling is going to Netflix. It's a 10-year, $5 billion deal to bring Monday Night Raw and other wrestling content to Netflix. Now... This wrestling federation was basically started by Vince McMahon, who is a psychologist's dream and nightmare in one. He has made himself a billionaire by this. He is a huge, larger-than-life character with all that implies, and we will get on to this. Now, last year, WWE merged with UFC, and they created this big company called TKO. UFC is owned by Endeavor. We'll get over all these boring company names in a minute, but they're, 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 the new name is TKO. There, now, are, there are a lot of TLAs in this story. <laughs> there are a lot of TLAs. That's th- uh, three-letter abbreviations. Yes. There was the Vince McMahon and The Rock, who has joined the board of TKO now. This means he's got his name back, The Rock, because he's been forced to trade as Dwayne Johnson ever since he left the warm embrace of the WWE. But he's now back within the fold and he's able to use his name, The Rock. He owns The Rock. He owns The Rock and he's back on the board. And they rang the bell on Tuesday at the New York Stock Exchange um, to open trading. So it's, it's a kind of big, splashy merger. It is a huge deal for Netflix, but there's been a huge plot twist, which we're going to get onto in a minute. This is something we've been talking about, Richard, isn't it? It's not sport. But it's kind of sport adjacent. Sports entertainment. Sports entertainment. In fact, the WWE once went to court to say that what they show is not sport, it is entertainment, just in order to save an extra 10% tax that you would have to pay if it were sport. I think it's fair enough. Yes. It's not like a Jaffa Cakes being a cake or biscuit situation. I would say WWE are allowed to say this isn't a sport. Absolutely. It's like ballroom dancing. It's an athletic pursuit. It's 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 an entertainment. It's Athletics meets entertainment. Yeah, with crafted plot lines. But in a way, that's what has drawn someone... Ted Sarandos, the Netflix CEO, he said that this is absolutely in our sweet spot, which is about the drama of sport. And I think he sees this as a kind of inverse of Formula One, whereas Formula One is obviously big around the world, but not very big in North America. And now Netflix have got Drive to Survive, which kind of takes you inside the seasons and the plot lines and all the things. And it's a sort of great entry point if you're trying to take the sport more global. WWE historically has been more sort of North America. It's much bigger there. And they think it's sort of underexported in terms of the global market. So this is huge for them. It's also, I mean, you know, it's not a sport, it is entertainment. But what it is, is live, which is not something that Netflix has got into before. That's essentially what they said. We're not going to do live sport. Now, having this as a live event, and WWE has live events um, and could do it a couple of times a week, That opens up the ad tier, which is what Netflix is slightly obsessed with. I mean, Netflix, by the way, just had their best ever quarter for subscribers. They put on 13 million subscribers in one quarter. Uh, The sole reason being the password crackdown. They said 100 million people were, uh, were watching on someone else's password. But what they want to do, what they've wanted to do for ages, and I suspect it may take a good 18 months to two years, is to introduce advertising. So you get a cheaper Netflix bundle if you pay less money and for netflix it's so funny how the world is turning into oh let's make television that's on a certain time of the week and have adverts in the middle of it you know it's becoming linear you know you're seeing a convergence between streaming and linear this year and you will see a lot more of this and wwe is the is is the sort of first move in that in that you can sit and watch it it will have to have adverts in it and it's it's an absolute perfect thing for them so 500 million dollars a year which is what it's costing them actually 
it's a sort of lost leader for them because it will bring people and, and suddenly make people understand that, you know, they can bear adverts and there will be a whole group of people who will buy Netflix just for this yeah. and their Netflix experience will be one with adverts. So that for them is a huge deal as well. But what is interesting is, as I said, I think it was last Tuesday they rang the bell at the New York Stock Exchange. There's Vince McMahon and it's all a great big thing. Within two days... A lawsuit dropped in which Vince McMahon was accused of trafficking, horrific sexual abuse and degradation that is genuinely too graphic for a family podcast. So I won't get into it. He obviously denies all of this. Um, But the Wall Street Journal published the details of the lawsuit. Now, over this period, we already knew that he had paid millions and millions and millions in hush money to lots of different women. He has now had to resign from the board of TK, resigned from WW. He has completely stepped back. Now, here comes my theory, OK? Vince McMahon is a monster hiding in plain sight. People already knew about this. He's already mm. resigned once in, I think, 2022 from over these type of allegations, possibly involving the same um, complainants. It's not totally clear. But people knew about this. He'd already made a statement on this, but he kind of nominated himself back to the board. And so when they originally did the Netflix deal last week, I thought, huh, I mean, I guess, you know, wrestling is a law unto itself because you wouldn't imagine someone like Ted Sarandos kind of getting into bed with someone who has this much baggage because please don't tell me they don't know about this. You don't spend five billion pounds and not do your due diligence. Everyone knows the kind of type of guy Vince McMahon is. Now, having said that, he is now out. And I think that this is my theory again. I don't have no, but, but I think that he has been outmoded, but he is a liability. It's almost like what happened at Disney with Ike Perlmutter, the guy who started Marvel in its current form. These are very, very difficult sort of executives and they want to get them out so that they can have no more problems with their huge new property. Now, I think that. The timing of this is so coincidental that I think he's been outmaneuvered by someone like Ari Emanuel, who owns Endeavour, which owns UFC. So he owns sort of part of this merged company. And now they don't have to deal with Vince McMahon anymore. So he had sort of two days of being truly on top of the world. He's already been made a billionaire by this, but he had two days of being on top of the world. And now he is completely out. And it's really quite difficult to imagine, to some extent, wrestling without him. He has created the, the, the form that we see in which we see it now. So that was a pre-done deal, you think? You think um, Netflix signed up with WME and said, listen, we'll do it, but uh, it has to be that I have that no Vince is, evidence is well out of within that. minutes. Because if Vince had been in court beforehand, he might not have signed the deal. But he signed the deal and then was straight into court. He signed the deal and for it all to happen in one week seems to me quite extraordinary. But anyway, a potential enormous thorn in their side, liability, embarrassment is gone. Now, Ari Emanuel was one of the people who said at the time of the Harvey Weinstein revelations came out that, oh, Miramax, the board there should have acted a lot sooner. They must have known. Everybody knew. They should have done something about it. And he was very, very vocal about that. Now, I think it would have been pretty hard for him to get into bed and people saying, well, I mean, you can't tell us that people don't know certain things, certain accusations have been levelled against Vince McMahon because he already had to leave the company in a sort of slightly fake way once. Uh, so it seems to me that they have manoeuvred him out. Ari Emanuel uh, is, certainly could manoeuvre anybody out. He's he's the guy that Jeremy Piven is based on in Entourage. Yeah. Is that right? Uh, I heard a story recently from someone who, who, who works in that world saying that they hired a very senior guy at William Morris Endeavour, uh, but he was also called Ari uh, and the message came down that Ari, can he stop calling himself Ari so there's not two Aries in the company? And so Ari said, OK. And so now he's called Ari even by his family, <laughs> which I'm, I'm, wow. I'm, I'm sworn to is true. I'm well, told it's true. But it, yeah, he, he's, he's, a, he's a real <laughs> operator. This is about as big a deal as you can get in Hollywood. And it's done it's between enormous. a company that used to send CDs through the post yeah. uh, and a company that we think of as just men in latex throwing yeah. each other around a ring. And it's, it's, it's an extraordinarily huge deal. It means a great deal for what's going to happen at Netflix in the future. It shows their direction of travel. Uh, and I think it's just, I mean, I love the wrestling. I love so, um, it too. Yeah, I mean, and I, I don't know if is it is it worth five billion. I don't know. I like, don't know. People say, oh, be... you can't believe it. It's like, yeah, no, I know you can't. I mean, I watch the Olympics, and I sometimes think, I don't think I believe any of this athletics. And well, exactly. plenty of others Listen, will think that. I watch the Tour de France yeah. every year, and I'm Come very, on. I'm very happy to. I watched <laughs> the Tour on. de France in the nineties. Even okay? though you know. So it's uh, listen. It has an equivalence, doesn't it? But Netflix, by and large. Seem to be made. There was there was a thing about eighteen months ago saying oh, we've had peak Netflix. They're all over, yeah. and just time after time they make smart decisions and do the right thing. And all these other streamers are having trouble, and Netflix is just going from strength to strength. Revenues are crazy, profit is crazy, subscriber numbers crazy. As discussed here before, they have won the streaming wars, even if rather sweetly some of their competitors are pretending they haven't. 
So wrestling, sports or entertainment, Jaffa Cake, Cake or Biscuit, I know which one my Twitter will be full of yes. after this podcast. It's a biscuit, by the way. I on the, I concur with you on 100% this. agree. Yes. I know it's called a cake, but Bonnie Tyler is called Bonnie Tyler and you wouldn't get it to regret your bathroom. <laughs> Would you? Can we please talk about the Barbie Oscars, Ra? Yes, we can. I have had a total eclipse of the heart on this one, I have to tell you. <laughs> There we go. That's, that's dealt She's with. Dealt with. That, yeah. That's that's taken a lot of the pressure yeah. off. Okay, Ryan Gosling issued it. the nominations come out. He is nominated. Greta Gerwig is not nominated in the best director category, and Margot Robbie is not nominated in the best actress category. You look so tired. To yeah, even I mean, people are just realizing that the Academy is disappointing to them. Okay, They've, I should think <laughs> half of the films that have won Best F- Picture are the wrong choice. But you know, that's showbiz. That's what it's like. Okay, but Ryan Gosling has issued a statement saying that you know there is no um, Ken without Barbie. All this stuff. Okay, now he has been joined by they tried to drag Michelle Yeoh into it. She won Best Actress last year, presumably on some kind of mutual discrimination ticket. I've seen John Stamos, the Australian state of Victoria. Victoria's police department have got involved in this. They say Margot's been robbied. And here she comes because Hillary Clinton has oh. also tweeted on it. She said, while it can sting to win the box office but not take home the gold. Oh, my God, here we go. Your millions of fans love you. You're both so much more than Ken Off. OK, thank wow. you, former Secretary of State. OK, let me say two things. One, this is not about whether Lock men... Lock her up. Yeah. Lock her up. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> Whether men are better than women, it is acting categories at the Academy Awards. Also, it has nothing to do with the 2016 US presidential election. (laughs) And I'm confident in saying that, Okay, Now, I guess the thing I do find really fascinating about this is, okay, as I say, the Academy of Disappointed People forever and ever. And, you know, how many years were Steven Spielberg's films overlooked, Martin Scorsese's? You know, they never issued a statement. So the issuing of the statement is new. And I... Honestly, you t- his agent, Ryan Gosling's agent, would have said, maybe this will look bad for you, something, you know, and it, this would all have been agreed, signed off. This is a high-level thing. It comes off as a little thing you've said on Instagram or Twitter or whatever, but it's not. It's a high-level thing. So something has changed, and I think it is that in this pious world, allyship is regarded as more valuable to his brand, financially valuable, than not pissing off the, the Oscars, which... You know, he's been nominated before and he could be nominated again. In the old days, you would have never have said anything because you're not going to annoy them. You're yeah. not going to sort of, you know, look gracious or anything. But this is the value place now on allyship. I mean, I think if I'm all for Ryan Gosling making a statement. I mean, any time there's a show, you know, it's like Ant has been nominated and Deck hasn't. You know, <laughs> that would be an issue. Um, if I, If any statement should have come from Ryan Gosling, it should have been... How on earth have I been nominated Quite. for Best Supporting Actor? For, How? I didn't really do He's great in that film, but he's he's just Ryan Gosling. Yeah. I mean, there's there's people doing extraordinary work out there in films around the world, which would never get a look in because the Oscars is such yeah. a money game and, you know, everything has to be sort of promoted. The fact that he's on the list of five Best Supporting Actors... Is a joke. ...is extraordinary. So Barbie up for Best Film, great, which means Margot Robbie is uh, up there for producer. She's producer, she's, yeah. Um, she's taken home $50 million because she had a massive back end on that movie as well, by the way. So, again, she's these okay. are not, these, this feels very victimless, deeply victimless. Um, and, you know, not being nominated for Best Actress, I mean... The five people I was looking through Sandra the list. Sandra Huller was better than her twice this yeah. year. She was yeah. better than her in the zone of interest, and she was better than her in Anatomy of a Fall. Okay, but also all five of the nominations are women. Yeah, I looked through the list. Yeah, so yeah. it's not like you know who's she knocking out. <laughs> yes, you know it seemed. It, but women so, are getting nominated here. Yeah, it's, director of Anatomy of a Fall is a woman, and she was nominated in the best director category. So. Bear in mind, Barbie has been, like, I can't remember a movie that's been as good as that and getting itself talked about right from the yeah. minute they started promoting it. It is unbelievable. And there have been something like 120% more posts. This was like the day after. 326% more video views talking about this. All the search terms of things like, you know, Margot, Greta. I mean, if you're a financier at a studio, you'll be thinking, please, can someone snub my movie next year? I, <laughs> I am desperate for someone to snub my movie because then they're putting this thing back into theatres. It's absolutely mad. You know, as we've said before, this is a movie that is made in the service of a toy corporation, Mattel. I liked it very much. Um, I thought the third act was a mess, but, you know, it was very jolly and we enjoyed it. Having said that, you know, J-Lo, they've just announced this week that J-Lo is now going to executive produce another movie for Mattel, which is Bob the Builder. 
J Lo's doing yeah. Bob the Builder. J Lo's doing Bob. So I want yeah. you to know that in two or three years, we're all going to be sitting here crying that the person who played Dizzy the Cement Mixer has been snubbed at the Academy Awards in probably in the best supporting category. And I, I, I hope we'll be having. I believe Sandra O oh was overlooked for, 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 for I, being Dizzy. I can't. Oh, you think it could be a woman? Yeah, I think so. God. Don't you? I mean, yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure they'll really reimagine. The, the the toy property which they are making in the service of the toy corporation. I, I, do you know what? I didn't realise Dizzy was a gentleman. Well, yeah, my, no, they're all guys. My mem- no. Yeah. The whole gang on Bob the Builder? Every single one Hold of on. those pieces of hardware Isn't it Wendy? is a man. Isn't it Lofty Scoop, and Wendy? Scoop, Muck and Dizzy. Scoop, Muck and Dizzy. Oh, yeah. Lofty and Wendy joined the crew. I think they're later additions because they felt like we've got to have one bird in this <laughs> yeah, construction. Yeah, Wendy yard. played by yeah. um, Margot Robbie, of course. Yeah, of course. Yeah. I'm, we'll wait to see. Well, no, they're going to have to re-gender that a little bit, aren't they? Oh, yes. I mean, you know, best piece of hardware at the Oscars. <laughs> Where are we going with this? Uh, so J-Lo and Bob the Builder. That's a, that's a marriage made in heaven, isn't it? Well, she's... What do you I think? think Bob is going down to Puerto Rico. He's going to become involved in construction there. I'm sure it'll become a deeply political movie because this is the only prison via which we are able to discuss issues in our culture now yeah. is via the prism of Mattel, Mattel toys. Can we fix it, si, senor? <laughs> I don't know the Oscars. Sometimes you watch things on... You watch films and there's people who are so amazing at acting and you would n- just never hear their names at the Oscars. It's, no. it's, it's always just... The same old gang, isn't it? Yeah. With like one new person each year. They go, oh, you can come in. Yes. Do come and join us. Yeah, so we're, we're okay with the Oscars. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm calm with, what, with the, the nominations. It has been Jeff's 60th birthday party uh, and Lauren, has his intended, uh, the affianced, as you know, has thrown a birthday party for him in their Beverly Hills place. Um, Nice kind place. Of, yeah, I, I, I can imagine. <laughs> I, who, I can tell you what the party was like. It was vaguely space themed because he likes space. You know, it okay. took him 60 years to get a character note, but he's got one now. And so everything has to be basically space themed. Like a five year old's yeah, birthday party. Like, yeah, like a five. Yeah, I mean, next year, genuinely. Next year, next year dinosaurs. Yeah. <laughs> Pirates. Now, the guests were welcomed by a built-out office that was an almost exact replica of Jeff's first Amazon office that was in a garage. Oh, that's a nice idea. Yeah, lovely idea. And they were served McDonald's because he also once worked in McDonald's when he was it was his first job. And caviar. Whoa, McDonald's, yeah. McDonald's and, caviar. and caviar. Where are you putting the caviar? Filio caviar. I don't know. How would you do it? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm not sure, I'm not sure exactly wife. about the mashups between the McDonald's men, menu, and I don't want to draw a lawsuit from the corporation. McCaviar. McCaviar. <laughs> a McCaviar. Um, Lauren was in something red, 800 hours of beading and a space rocket handbag, no surprises. But it's the passenger manifest of this party that I'm quite interested in because, OK, it has the usual billionaires, um, but it had, OK, Oprah, wow. Katy Perry and Orlando Bloom, Ivanka Trump and Jared Kushner, who've got a, a very small window of being invited to parties, I would say, they before just... they are persona non grata again. Uh, a load of Kardashians, lots of Jenners, uh, <laughs> and slightly disappointingly, I have to say, Jay-Z and Beyonce. Really? Yeah. I mean, that's covering all bases, isn't it? It is. I mean, these are celebrities that Jeff would like to know. What I always find very depressing when you see things like this, you used to see it with sort of Philip Green's parties as mm. well. He'd have these enormous kind of parties um, for his 50th, 60th, whatever. And you'd get these celebrities who were not his closest friends. I, I can understand why he would want them. I exactly want to see why jo- Jeff and Lauren would want them there. But don't we want something more than, from our great celebrities than that they want to sort of turn up to the boss of the Everything Corporation's birthday party? I mean... I suppose it is, and this is always just very depressing. I mean, it should be beneath Jay-Z and Beyonce, I'm sorry to say. I think that they just feel like they love... People like to be near power and they like to be near money. And, I mean, these are not the interesting... But Jeff Bezos is not an interesting guy. He's not a sort of fun... I find it very depressing when money dictates absolutely everything, including a sort of guest list of that, and people want to be near it. Had we been invited with our respective partners, I suspect all four of us would have gone. Oh, I go to just look at it. Yeah, yeah. exactly. But but that, but that said, a lot of it is I wonder what Jeff Bezos' house is like. But you see it in London a lot, celebrity and money, they, they, they have an equivalent. So very, very rich people can get access to celebrities. Yeah. And they like to get access to celebrities. It gives them a sort of um, 
a glamour that they don't have. And celebrities, a certain group of celebrities, like having access to yeah. money. I because... see Robbie Williams is there. I mean, he... he was is... he? Do you know, a friend of mine was once at a wedding and um, anyway, he did a film of me of the couple having their first dance and they were dancing to Angels by Robbie Williams and it's such a great video because then he just pans to the side and you go to the stage and it's like, oh, it's actual Robbie singing it on the stage. Wow. He can be hard as a wedding singer. <laughs> That's... A, yeah, listen, um, talking of J-Lo... Yeah. So when she got married in Italy about 20 odd years ago, it's just after 9-11. So the entire cast list sort of said, I'm not coming. So almost all the guests they didn't from America fly. pulled out, they didn't want to fly. Uh, and so an emergency flare went up in London around like the Groucho Club and stuff. So would, can anybody get out to Italy for J-Lo's wedding? Uh, and Zander, Alexander Armstrong, went to J-Lo's wedding. No. Because th th there was an open invitation to anyone who was even vaguely known by anybody in London to go out and fill the seats at, at J-Lo's wedding. she sold the pictures or something? So she, they had to have a full She must have done right. But also, yes, you, you don't want there to be like eight people out they there. They tend to have like three friends at all. And that's yeah. within the celebrity community. They've normally cut all ties with their childhood associates. There are certain celebrities in London who have parties that, that are only attended by other celebrities. And you, if you are ever invited, there, it's literally everybody is a celebrity. And you do kind of go, where are your, where are your friends from school? Yeah, I know. And there's where a sort they? of sense that it's, and in a funny way, it's your people are going because they think it might be good for their career. It's a kind of like, it's a sort of business decision all the time that you're doing business absolutely all the time, even in your social life. But it's also that clever thing of thinking, well, I, I know at that party it's all celebrities, so I, I wonder who else will be there. And so, of course, you're in a room full of celebrities, all of whom have come along, so they're thinking, I wonder who else will be there. That'll be an interesting story. But yeah, that, that, that world of high finance and celebrity, I find fascinating. They're both absolutely love access to each other. I always say the, 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 the few times that we sold Endemol, we were always selling it to someone. When you sell a company, you know the people buying you are incredibly smart about your earnings and the multiples yeah. of earnings that they should pay for your company. But if you've got a TV company, the multiples go absolutely out the window because honestly, they just think, oh, if we buy this company, we'll probably get to meet Davina. Yeah. You know, and so suddenly your company is worth eight times as much as it should be because it's it, it has like this halo of celebrity around it, and the social circuit is exactly the same. Uh, and yeah, listen, of course we would have gone to Jeff Bezos's birthday. I part. would have gone just to have a look, of course. But you see, I would I would have had you had to have your phone taken off you and put in a pouch, and then everyone was only oh. able to talk about it afterwards online. Oh, really? But they were all saying there was also I I believe that it was probably Lauren who tipped off the New York Post saying in case anyone thought the McDonald's and caviar and everything theme was sort of a grotesque and over the top, she said, you know, it was a strict no gifts policy. What are you going to get, my gift voucher? <laughs> By the way, this is you at the party. Hi, Jeff, I'm Marina. So nice to meet you. <laughs> hey, Lauren. Well, I would have wanted to talk to them for ages. Yeah, I, mean, I want to talk to these people for as long as possible, always. See, if you're a writer, you've always got the sort of slightly get out of jail free card, like, oh, I'm going along to see the horror and in, at some, in some way I'll write about it later. <laughs> But I, I assume at some point we have a wedding to look forward to as well between the two of them. Uh, can be... you imagine? She said, we don't know whether it will be a small one or a big one. And I thought, I do, Laura, yeah. even if you don't know yet. I think I know which one it's going to be. They get, they've had about three engagement parties already. It's going to be, I mean, it will be kind of grotesque and extreme. I mean, that will be in a rocket. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, you'll have free rocket rides around the back, like a donkey ride. But yeah. just, go, just so want to go up in Blue Origin for five seconds. 20 minutes before Alexander Armstrong gets a call saying, everyone's pulled out, Sander. Is there any way... To which he would say yes. Let's do the traitors very, very quickly. If you have not watched the final switch off now, it's been lovely seeing you. We'll see you on Thursday for the question and answer one. But if you have watched it... I'm amazed you've been able to avoid the outcome, but well done if you have. Uh, right, we're now talking about it, so spoilers ahoy. It was epic. It was, it was Shakespearean. Yeah. It was everything you wanted to see. This is what well, we talked about this before. When reality TV mim mimics sort of the most dramatic things in fiction, that is what you want to see. That is it in it its highest form. I mean, if we were in a writer's room, we go, how about right at the end? Um, we literally see her write the H yeah. of Harry. And then she crosses it out. You go, oh, that's a little bit on the nose, isn't it? I don't Poor think she old would Molly. I mean, no ill will to her. Bless her. Everybody needs a pet idiot. And that's what he had with her. He was able to use her as a shield all yeah. the way through. And I am very depressed that I have been seeing words like gaslit and groomed on social media talking about this, saying this is why it was so disturbing. This is a most ridiculous way to talk about 
somebody who has entered a television program yeah. with the title traitors in which you have to sign up and say that if the hand goes on your shoulder, you behave like a traitor. I find it extraordinary that people have been talking about it in this way. I agree 100%. It was Harry was literally playing a, uh, a game which he did very, very well. I love how much there's almost a moral collapse every time at the end of the traitors. You think, oh, he's going to go yeah. or he's going to share the money. But no, it's a no. game show and he, he won the money. And listen, she has genuinely got herself to blame. I mean, there is no logical earthly reason why Jazz would say this to another traitor here if he was no. a traitor. But and again, he and didn't have, as we discussed before, he didn't have that sort of social capital at any stage. Yeah. He was, and I can see he's become a sort of cult favourite, which is super, and I'm really yeah. pleased for him. But he didn't have within the group that was in the castle that social capital at any stage to have gone out on a limb and said it. Because if he had been a little bit more of a sort of, you know, just one of the most popular figures in the group, as it yeah. were, he was obviously liked, but he wasn't sort of like a Harry or a Paul or one of those things, then he 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 could have gone out and he could have got it for himself. But exactly, yeah. He didn't have that main character no. energy. No. So he was, he yeah, he, he, he did not have the ability to persuade Molly. I mean... Molly knew as well. I know. I mean, that's the thing. You know, she knew. It was she knew. Mesmerising watching someone know and not be able to do it. As I say, this was the highest form of the art form. Um, it was. Uh, yeah, I, I absolutely loved it. I think you know, f absolute fair play to uh, to Harry. Ja One of the things I love to see is when people put on social media like an entire bar stopped and they've got it on a massive screen in the bar, like it's sports, and everyone is just like that with their drink going. When jazz kind of yeah, came in, it's so I love great. I love footage from places where you don't expect people to. Where you're watching television, I've got a real weakness for it, and we saw such a lot of that this week. And then you realise that, which I've said forever and ever, almost all reality shows are sport. Yeah, I mean that just, that just is. It's personalities and people and gameplay. Um, someone once sent me a picture. There was obviously a World Cup game on or, or something, and in the in the main town square in Swansea, and and they'd set the big screen up earlier, uh, and pointless was on. So someone just sent me a picture, <laughs> just my massive face, just overlooking overlooking yes. Swansea. Well, in the future, I think we should been the show to everybody like that and you should pointless should be shown in all town squares it'd be fascinating to see what happens next series because no one had really learned anything from the first series this time and that's absolutely fine and we talked before about the fact that they're in a, in a very enclosed environment and everything feels so hyper real anyway so whatever sort of tactics you think you're going to have slightly go out the window but next time it's it has got to occur to people that the getting out of the traders is not the point of the game. Yeah. The point of the game is surviving. Yeah. And you know, if you stay get stay in out, people's slipstream, don't feel yeah. it's yeah. Which Evie did, and Evie Evie sort of said that. She said, you know, I I've been quiet throughout, but I was quiet for a reason. Yeah. You know, I think Molly was quiet because she was just quiet. But I think Evie um kept quiet. But I think that next and it's fascinating with her because she sort of got herself voted out because she was there was a, that whole thing of the people who knew that Harry had the shield and she was one of them. And she was like, well, the other two have been voted out, so now it's me. It has to be me. She was frightfully even, reasonable about it. Even though she knew it, it wasn't. Reasonable. She knew it wasn't her, but yeah. she kept saying, I quite yeah. understand, yeah. I quite understand. And she made it easy to actually... Because a lot of it at that point is that you are sort of knifing someone yeah. and you're taking them away from the money and the motive stories they've just told you about why they need the money. And so, but she made it easy to write her name down. It was a thing that happened three days ago, which, yeah. in, which in traitors thing might as well be the seventeenth century. They, forget, <laughs> they literally, if it didn't happen ten minutes ago, yeah. like then, then, they're, then they're not not interested. What a player, Harry! What a player! Uh, I mean, all the plaudits. It was amazing. I throw roses at his feet. Yeah, at that point of the show where it's very, very hard to keep your momentum up, which is when there's six or seven people left, he got rid of three people in a row with one simple ploy. Yeah. Well, not simple ploy, with one clever ploy, which was the shield, and then was absolutely willing to lie barefaced to someone he cared very deeply about to win the money at the end. It's all up there in the title of the show. <laughs> and that's how you win that show. But yeah, next series will be fascinating. But congratulations to everyone who, uh, who who worked on that show. I thought it was an amazing achievement. Phenomenal. Claudia was phenomenal. I mean, the whole, the, the the whole, whole thing, thing was beautifully put together and lovely to see that um, you know, 7 million people tuned in on Friday night. That will go above. The catch up will be huge. 10 million. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, you know it's, it's really lovely. Fascinating. This is just a sidebar. But of course probably slightly lower ratings than I'm a Celebrity get me out of here, but everyone talking about it in a different way than they do with with I'm a Celebrity. Everyone's going, I'm not watching this year because yeah. of Farage. Uh, with Traitors, are going, everyone's watching it. Yes. You go, it was exactly the same amount of people. And it's the real high-low of everyone, all sorts of people saying, I don't get involved in this sort of stuff normally. Yeah. And it's a real, like, 
uh, kind of gateway drug for a lot of people who do not think they don't yeah. watch reality TV but will make an exception for this show, which is really, I think that's quite interesting. Gosh, we covered a lot, didn't we? Yes, we did. That was rather a lot. Let's say that we are coming back, as always, on Thursday for a questions... And answers. ...edition of, questions. This, of this show. That'll be fun. It's largely going to be Bonnie Tyler-based, I think. Yeah, do please keep your questions, Tyler, or otherwise related. Send them in to us at therestisentertainment at gmail.com. They are so good, the questions. We absolutely love them and... It's going to be quite hard to get. We through. have got hundred. Well, I was I was looking like through a few. <laughs> we got we we've got some great ones for this week. Some yes. really great ones, including that question of why do people on the traitors and Bake Off and that why don't they give away what happened yeah. to the audience beforehand? So I have an answer for that and and many other things as well. See you on Thursday. See you on Thursday. Bye. 